Hey guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the Muscle Mind Podcast. My name is Matthew Foster. We have Lyndon and Cody with us today, looking all gorgeous and sexy. Today we're going to be talking about stretching, uh, both static and dynamic, uh, and then we're also going to dive into foam rolling. Oh, I forget what we're doing stretching. That's stretching and foam too. rolling, nice. yes. Huge part of, uh, obviously, exercise and recovery, uh, different aspects. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's start with stretching static uh and dynamic linda what's the what's the tell everyone what, what is the, the difference, what's the difference right? man? What's static the difference? static stretching is when you hold a position for yeah what i tell everybody is 20 30 seconds yeah. is going to be a static stretch so you get into that stretched position and hold it that's a static stretch dynamic stretching is when you're actually moving the body and slowly extending it past it's range of motion so early in the mornings it's a good time to just start moving yeah your your static stretching usually is you're getting out of bed because you're you're just starting to move those dynamic stretching you mean? Oh, i'm sorry yes dynamic okay. i know right <laughs> so, well somebody's got to keep me straight but static are good when you go to bed because you're trying to turn off those muscles yeah exactly okay Boom. and it's and it's the same with the workout so okay. there you go prior to the workout we do dynamic true after the workout we do static Funny, I posted that question the other day about stretching on uh, Facebook. I did, and most people, most of the comments were dynamic first and static second, right? Or right. So, some people were, some people were mm -hmm. posting other things, which you know, that's what they do. It was a question about sure. what do you do. Mm -hmm. Good thing is most of them were stretching. Yeah. The sad thing is some of them don't understand the different types of stretching and and why we do it and when we do it. Indeed. So. Right. So, Cody, what's your break in, What's your breakdown difference between simplified version and between static and dynamic? Same question to her, to, to you. Just what oh, your my version. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would say from a practical standpoint, because right now we're kind of talking about the, the difference between the two. Um, you know, for a lot of us, I think we we go into training clients. If you're going to do a workout or whatever, that's why we do recommend the dynamic before. You are preparing your body. Like sometimes you'll see. I have one lady. She's done it for years. She, before I even got with her, she already had a dynamic routine that she's always yeah. done. So I have we one. just we just do that. So it's about ten or fifteen minutes. Um, it's pretty lengthy, <clears throat> but I mean she's ready to go. She jumps right into it. You know, at yeah. that point. So it's everything from walking lunges with a turn. Um, you know, she'll step and uh, do a quad stretch with a big reach. She'll do kind of sumo walks or like the side side lunge type things. I've done other ones with athletes like inchworms as far as like, you know, going to a plank position and kind of walking your walking your toes up to kind of actively stretching your calves. I mean, mm -hmm. so you're you're still actually and this is kind of a misconception, so you're still actively actually stretching and elongating your muscles because you are holding on average anywhere from like two to five seconds. Mm -hmm. There's actually yeah, you know, I do get super nerdy on this stuff because I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm about to bust into. I'm about to bust into. Don't get super nerdy yet. Just, oh yeah, yeah. Just a basic breakdown. Okay, good, good stop. Good, good stop point. Okay, so yeah, so to get you get you limbered up and and get you know some trainers and some people will change their dynamic moving warm up depending on the day. It's like Matt, you've said you'll do if you're doing a squat day, you'll just do yeah, you do some kind of hip hinge thing, you do some kind of yeah, exactly, you, you know get I mean? your glutes firing yeah. So it's targeted that way. So it's really preparing your body for the movement, and it's right. turned on. You get the your muscular response, so it's ready to fire. Now, when you do a static stretch, once you get past like 15 seconds, your muscles they're they're held so long that you're 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 kind of over not over stretching, but they're extended so long that they start to kind of actually go a little bit farther and then kind of, I say turn off or deactivate but really more relaxed right yeah and that's that's why it's not good to do that before because you're, you're basically going completely against the active part of it right so that's why well we do recommend and it's highly recommended uh, to do it when you're when you're done with the workout but most people skip it a lot of people skip what are your thoughts on doing it in between sets I know Steve Cook's a huge proponent of that like if he's doing so he's doing like chest flies in between sets. He'll he'll do a static stretch of, of his chest. Yeah, which I find interesting to me. I I don't like it because it just it, it's taxing the muscle that, that. Right. I think that's more of a feel a feel good response. Right. It's like when people pull a muscle. Mm -hmm. Your natural instinct because it feels knotted up on you right. after the pull stretch is to stretch it. Right. That's counterproductive. Right. Because you're not trying. You don't need to stretch. It's already pulled. You don't need to stretch anymore. You need sure. to let it recover. So yeah. I think that's my opinion. Interesting. But yeah. what about um, 
because as soon as I said most people don't stretch after a workout, what are your immediate thoughts on? Oh, that, that everybody, that is a general rule for a lot of people. They get done with their workout, and I've been guilty of it. Yeah. You know, finish the workout, don't have time to stretch. But it's, I mean, it is necessary. <clears throat> That's when you gain the flexibility. Right. So if you want to be a better athlete. That's what I want you to come up Yeah. If you want to be a better athlete, if you want to be better, um, more limber and be able to even just um, live life more comfortably throughout your life. Yeah. If you stretch, you will be more comfortable. If you stretch as an athlete when you're done, because you spent so much time tightening up those muscles right. and making them stronger and, and, and they're just like this, if you don't stretch them, you're just going to be this yeah. person yeah. walking around like this all well, the time. On top of it, And too. you're stiff and it hurts. Yeah. Good. So, so very important to stretch. And it's important, you know, I, I, love, I love stretching because I think about like a baby coming out of the womb. They're just, they're like pliable, everything, you know, their bones are still soft. So right. everything they do is, yeah. you know, and as they, toddlers, you watch a toddler get into a squat. Right. They do it perfect. I yeah. They're amazing, right? But they're limber too. They're yeah, still I've never limber. even thought about that. You got, well, you need to go back and watch the video that I did uh, with Trey like four years ago, talking about like different parts of the country and the world, the people yeah. that don't sit down in benches. Yeah. And they, he had a we had a, like a picture of like a toddler, how they just completely squat. I mean, flat, flat footed squat, no yeah. like Achilles I, yeah. shortening. It's crazy. And then it was I think someone in, in an Asian country. Same thing, sitting down. I think he might have been smoking a cigarette, but I don't know. but like they were both like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. of their, you know, they don't they don't just sit around like we do, right? So we stretch or we work out a lot, you know, and that's what that's what a lot of Americans do. Either they sit behind a desk a lot or they work out a lot. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the muscles get tight. If they don't stretch them, you know, everything you end up hurting yourself. You end up you're not as you can't get as strong. I mean, your muscles don't recover as yeah, well. That's recovery. recovery is key. big time. Yeah. So. A do, lot about. do you find it like beneficial for someone to have a certain routine that they do? Like you mentioned, you, you had someone who had a routine that she did. Yeah, I think if you establish a, a routine, you're going to be more likely to do it. Right. And if a dynamic, a dynamic can be a lot longer than, mm -hmm. I mean, a static still needs to be probably five to ten minutes, mm -hmm. if not longer, if you can. But a, a strict, because you'd be surprised at how many muscles you can effectively stretch in a short amount of time sure. right because you yeah. can stretch two or three at one right. time so there's not a reason for you to totally cut it out it wasn't so too it was the fact that the fact that you've worked out your muscles your body is so warm that's at that perfect. point so that's a perfect time because the right. elasticity they're actually going to stretch more effectively um on that so yeah that's a good question i do think if you can establish uh, a straight like you know routine to be able to pre and post exercise you're going to be much more disciplined in doing it so for someone like starting out like how long do you think like the dynamic should be like what's a good like don't go over this but do it for at least and do you think that they should do it if you're doing like a leg day for example should it be lower body based should you always do a total body dynamic warm-up linda you don't want you to chime in on this too but could is it something that you you want to kind of create something that's total body regardless of what you're working mm -hmm. or should someone kind of gear towards that particular area that they're focused on and maybe say the static stretches for there that they work yeah, I mean, my my danger response and Linda may be different on this one because this is a, this is a world that you're going to have different approaches. I think too mm -hmm. um, is is based off the individual. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think being specific, like you, if you're if you're going to do more like targeted weightlifting or whatnot or, or resistance training, um, then even if you do incorporate your whole body, you probably need to spend a little bit more time on that like leg area, area. specific area. For me, I mean, but I do know some like it doesn't matter what we're doing for this like this one client that I have. She does the whole body, and it, it actually gets you in a mindset. So right. I think and that I think that, that kind of depends on Plays if you well. if you can just jump into it or. or well, whatever. mine is the spine because it, it's all oh, yeah. the central nervous system. So so yeah, we're gonna maybe just do arms today, but I'm still gonna have you go through cat cows, go through some bird dogs, things that activate the central so you nervous do actually, system. So you do like some really good mobility movements. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So a few things like that, and then if we're gonna do legs, then I'm gonna do leg swings, you know, gate openers, butt kickers, stuff like that, depending on yeah. what we're working. But almost always I start with the spine. Interesting. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about um, the um, the dynamic aspect of it, because yeah, Linda made a good point, and then Matt made a good point the other day, we were talking about dynamic stretching and how 
if you just look at professional athletes or collegiate athletes, or I mean nowadays even, um, I think even younger athletes, it's, get, it's getting much more adopted by coaches for mm-hmm. sure. But you'll see this a lot of time to go through these full preparations. So you'll have your basic kind of dynamic movements that you might do, like you might actually do when you're doing a regular workout. Mm-hmm. Then you'll get into more sport specific mm-hmm. movements yep, as absolutely. far as the actual lateral movements, the jumps or whatever based off of the sport. One thing I think is super hilarious, and this is what um, I didn't want to bring up, because like ballistic stretching, that's old school, but you'll still sell people to do it. What ballistic stretching is, is when you're bouncing. Yeah. Right. Um, that's like if you're like trying to like get something going, a lot of times you'll see people kind of bend over and test their toes and they'll bounce back up. Ballistic stretching has the complete opposite effect of both dynamic and static because it's so reactive that even though it might feel good that you're getting more range of motion overall, like the muscles are actually shortening because they're having to quickly react. But what I'm going to say before I get, I'll get right back in like on topic, but what cracks me up is people, uh, I've had people say, well, what about track athletes? Like if you see them before they're doing like a, you know, a 50, 50 meter, or, you know, like a hundred meter, you know, 40 yard dash, whatever, whatever it is, it's like something kind of short burst. Um, you'll see them actually doing like yeah, you ballistic will. and jump. What you did not see was the one, like, 45 minute to a one hour warm up, yeah. dynamic prior, warm up prior, prior to that. Right. And then you don't see like if they're more of a middle distance or a longer distance, then you don't see the the one to two mile cool down or right. warm down run and then the static stretching after that. You know, you just saw that one window of time. You didn't see all that preparation and that's to get peak performance. So, I mean, if they're doing it, to that that's extent, right. even if Before we do it they're... partially. Yeah. So anyway, so that ballistic is... That is definitely one thing that's you a good, should never do. That's a good, uh, yeah. So, look, then what about, like, static stretches? If you, you know, for example, the client, if you guys did mostly lower body, are you going to are you gonna static stretch that lower body or continue still doing the total body? No, no. Then, by the at the end of the workout, then you're just focusing on the muscles that you really well, worked. Whatever you trained, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so so definitely, and I, and I, sometimes I watch the clock, sometimes I count. Most of the time, I can pretty much guess about the right amount of time. Um, I just make them stretch. Sometimes I help them stretch because they have, you know, I know that there's certain positions that I, I can go into that if somebody will push a little harder, you know, I'll get a better stretch. Like well, I can't pull myself out. Right, well there are, I mean there are things, so I'm glad we were talking about this because where my head went was, like if you got a belt or if you got a towel or yeah. something that you could loop around your leg or something, you don't want to crank band. on it or a band or something. I was just about to touch on bands. Yeah, because a lot of my ladies stretch with bands. So those yeah. that, those that gives you added leverage without having to have somebody right. there. And, right. And, and again, there is a certain method to it. You don't want to crank down on it. Um, you know, I really want to get into. Well, I will. Okay, so <laughs> the so that's one thing. It. If you don't have a if you don't have a partner. I mean, yeah. a part of stretching is, is super nice. Actually, uh, now that we're in this, uh, one of our trainers asked if we could actually start incorporating stretching sessions because I know some trainers will actually speak. Well, I stretch there. every last one of my legs. Right. So I, I get some, all in their But business. some trainers don't. Like, so yeah. some people really need That's like, kind of the highlight of their day because they are so inflexible. But anyway. Do that or just have you know, me right on top of them. That's a highlight to their day. Oh, too. please. <laughs> You gonna say something else on that? Mm. So okay, so let me say talking about proprioceptive neuromuscular. Um, oh shoot, I went blank again. Flexibility? No. Anyway, so PNF, you know, PNF yes. stretching. Um, really, what that is? So it's kind of it's kind of neat. It, now, if you have somebody that's a really good stretcher, um, like Linda or apparently Matt, um, what this does is there's a passive and an active like portion of the stretch. Correct. So yeah. like. Um, like for example, the hamstring is probably the easiest one to yeah, like activate, really, but, yeah. really kind of I guess imagine too if you're on your back, kind of trying to get that over the top of your head. So a PNF, <laughs> the, you don't want to get it over top. Of your head. Yeah, some people are more flexible than you. I mean, yeah. they can, but that's not the goal. Yeah, no, 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 it's not. You're right. You're just trying to actually increase a little bit more each time. So it's neat because PNF, because you're actually trying to activate the muscle. Mm-hmm. So like if the person, or if you have a towel or something, you can use that. But if you have the person, you actually so as they're pulling your leg back, you'll um, You'll push against them for so many seconds, Mm -hmm. and then you'll let off, and then at that point, they will passively stretch you into a deeper position. And what happens is it, it's like um, when we're talking about like like relaxation techniques, Mm -hmm. like for health behavior or uh, stress stress release and that type of stuff. There's different um, techniques where they'll say if you're trying to relax a muscle, to flex it as hard as you can, 
and then relax. Yeah. So you're going you're yeah. going from one they extreme. They teach you that in the Lamaze classes when you're going to have well, a baby. Well, yeah, I guess well, I'll learn that one. That's probably a reason. Oh, well, yeah. It's a reason um, why they do that. But it's just neat to see that type of, like, in more in depth. Because you do it about, you know, two or three times. And you'll get, I mean, you can get, like, 10 to 15 degrees of added range of, of motion yeah. right. um, because of that intention. But So it's about, you know, you start to stretch up <clears throat> and then... Then you'll tell them for about six seconds they're going to push against you. Right, yeah. And then, then tell them to take a deep breath and exhale as you push. Mm -hmm. That exhale causes them to relax a little bit more. What's right. that called again? What, what's PNF. Pre Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Yes. Okay. PNF stretches. PNF stretches. P PNF stretches. Yeah. You look PNF up. P That's right. Yep. And then you do that, like you said, you know, two or three times and you're going to get a lot better range of motion. Out of a stretch, right? So, so some techniques to to consider. Sure. Just don't just don't pull anything and come yeah, back. Yeah. On it. Right. So, like one of the doctors I'm working with, hers are just her legs are just so tight mm -hmm. that that's what we started doing after every workout, even if she doesn't work her legs, mm -hmm. because her legs are so tight. Right. It's goal goal oriented and kind of yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Yeah, because you would ask, you know, when when they work them, but occasionally if somebody's just has issues in a certain area you're going to work on that as often as possible to to kind of to kind of piggyback off the uh dynamic warm-up and and you know obviously we've kind of come to the conclusion that dynamic warm-ups are ideal for the beginning of your workout mm -hmm. to get your body going to get your muscles firing to get your brain i i have a right. dynamic warm -up. i get this for my brain oh yes yeah. to get me it's to get me rolling, whether that is like lunges, superset with like leg extensions and some, you know, leg swings or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's getting your body and your mind ready to get your workout in. Yep. How important does foam rolling play in dynamic? But my, my, my question is, uh, I foam roll, and most people do foam roll when they're sore. And... I tell my girls when you're really you after like a tough leg day and they're like, oh, I'm just so sore. Like today my butt's really sore. I'm going to foam roll tonight whenever I work out to kind of work out that, that, that tightness and that, that soreness getting into like myofascial release. We'll talk about that in a second. But is foam rolling, um, number one, is it necessary in your eyes? Number two, is that pre, during, or post-workout? Is that a pre, during, or post-workout element of exercise, Linda? What do you think? For me, it is. it depends on the um, person, but it can be both pre and post. Pre and post. Yep. I don't do it during a workout. I've never... Have you ever used it during? No. I have. Not. Like, if I'm doing squats, I'll do, like, right. two warm-up sets with it, roll just a little bit, and then before I get into, like, doing something heavy. Something yeah, like that. So pre, so, pre and post... Okay, Cody, what do you think? Is it is that a pre, during, or post? And I'll let you just fire away at it. <laughs> I think it's more important, like, like between, like between workouts. It's actually something that you should do. For a lot of people, they should do it. I think on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, exactly. We actually had an entire. I'll get back to the workout stuff here in a minute, but we had a, our, a lot of the chiropractic that we refer a lot of our people over to sports chiropractic. He took um. He took, he took like a one hour session with us on foam rolling, like several of our clients, whatever. And I didn't realize the depth of it as far as even potential pathways that you're supposed to roll. Yeah. I'm not going to go into that nerdiness. No, but the, I mean, a lot of it is a simple, I guess the simplified way of it is it's not necessarily for just the, the muscle soreness or recovery mm -hmm. or whatever. It's actually the fact that you, you develop a few things. You can develop knots in your muscles. So as they've been facilitated, they can kind of jumble up and overlap on each other. Um, and when you go get a massage, the reason you feel different, the reason you feel more limber, or the reason you feel kind of more impacted is because they have hit those trigger points or they found those knotted up portions of your muscles um, and have been able to realign those muscles, which can inhibit. And so when you're doing foam rolling, that's one area. Like if you're, if you're hitting certain areas, you'll hit like this trigger point. Mm -hmm. yeah. That will just, it feels Y'all so painful. painful. If you do it right, you should actually break out of sweat. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because it's, it is, seems very, very painful, especially if you get on your IT band. <sighs> Another thing, the reason we say myofascial release, now that's between your muscles and your skin. That's right. the actual connective, um, tissue. connective tissue that's between your muscle and your skin. Um, and that builds up adhesion, especially if you're very active, or even, even if you're not active. If you're stagnant, things start to kind of freeze That's up. Right. And when you're rolling through that, you're breaking up the adhesion, so then you're allowing 
the that area between your muscles and your skin to move more freely, which freely, which is going to incorporate or lead to much more um, mobility, less pain, because you're when you're tight in certain areas, it's going to pull on other portions of your of your body, right? As well, is it is it is foam rolling? Because I see people like they'll like roll their glutes, their quads, their upper back. Can you get into like the the smaller muscle groups as well, like your calves, your forearms, your yeah biceps, and different things? I like can that. foam roll any portion of your body. Yeah, I think that's a, I think a lot of people miss that. Like yeah. a lot of people will will just do your larger main muscle group especially like glutes see a lot of people like rolling out their glutes which is fantastic but getting into your calves and getting into yeah. even your shins like flipping over like can, all that kind of stuff you've got yeah. shin splints or something like that oh you can foam roll your chest i mean you can yeah, you can like as far as like all in your shoulder well, then you get into like, like a you tennis can get ball. you can get down your oh my gosh stuff that hurts as, well. as bad as the it band. yeah <laughs> right there yeah all that down there and the most painful is that like it da- yeah. it band how do you do the bicep that sheath hmm? how do you, do you the bicep? well you just lay face down on your stomach and i guess i have to upload a video for what yeah. if you're watching that but like to do it you're like you're laying face down on the ground you do have to have be a certain way and then you drive Sweet. it mm-hmm. okay you drive it out now a Always lot of people a lot of people go back and, and forth. forth and if you find a trigger point, that's fine. I mean, you can kind of sit on it because you want to can friction it mm-hmm. when you're going back and forth on it. Stuff frictioning, right. um, and then that will eventually release. But yeah, to get your bicep, you actually get, you can do your. I mean, if you do it properly, you can actually get all those muscles in your neck. I as guess well. I never really tried my bicep. Though. It'll hurt. You know, you won't realize because you had never done it. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of knots in the in those muscles. I mean, it's I've pretty just, much done all the other. But, muscles. So the main thing I would say. So you asked your initial question 20 minutes ago was. Um, before or after I recommend because it actually is a deactivation of the muscles so I always recommend doing it after um, it's just because you're trying to turn do, those do you want to do that before or after your static stretching um, that's does a good it question. really matter I don't know if that one really stretches I would actually, actually I would probably do it before yeah. because the fact that you're kind of you're breaking those things that's actually realigning a everything less of a, and then, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, your body's going to stay warm because you're putting your body kind of through stand, that. Yeah, you don't want to cool it down and, and then, then get it back. And then stretch yeah. after it. Um, yeah, so that's those are the things. I would say for most people, though, if you could at least... I've, I'm going to call Heather Brown out now because she, I'm, <laughs> I always say something to her because she always talks. She has pain, you know, like that radiates kind of around her hips and her glutes. Now, a lot of people, they think it's low back pain. Usually, it's tightness in your glutes. Yeah. So if most people at least spend five, ten minutes a day, if nothing else, will roll their glutes um, or their piriformis, like if you cross your legs over and that type of stuff, to get much deeper in the muscles. A lot of that, what they call radiating pain or what is happening somewhere else, will start to, to go away. So it's, you start you target all these, you start to see these sources in your body. I, I'm amazed, like, <clears throat> when I've had really tight hamstrings, uh, I think my hamstrings are really tight. Yep. It's no, my calf. That, yeah. I, so I get, roll my calf and I'm like, and your glutes, you're, 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 I feel yeah. so much better. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you do. You think you have a pain in one area, but the kinetic chain, the body, is yeah. made up Super so crazy. intricately, intricately, mm-hmm. and everything's connected. So you may think you got something going on somewhere, but it could be somewhere else. So you got to pay attention. It's very true. Is there is there a certain link? Like I know you mentioned doing five or ten, maybe a couple of days a week. Is it is it a certain routine? Is this? I'll, I'll ask you. Is it? Do you want to foam roll everything, or where you where you're you're sore, where you're feeling it, where you're tight? Do you want to stay limber and loose? And uh, I would say ideally you would roll your whole body every day. Well, that's what <laughs> foam not, roll. Not your whole body, but like your main large muscle groups. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Ideally, yeah, you would do it every day. It realistically three days a week. Yeah. Yeah. Something. But I mean the more yeah I mean just start off that way you don't have to start big but I mean the way that that um, Dr. Matt was talking about doing it you know, with the prime spine is he does it before he goes to bed yeah it's kind of the last thing like and I'll do this a lot of times now it's that kind of been my like just what do they call down. it my evening ritual that's yeah. actually a part of my evening ritual before I go to bed because I'm I'm actually prepping my body I'm turning all my muscles off so I'm getting the knots and stuff kind of released and I might be watching the news or whatever it's the last of the sitcom I'm watching or whatever if the TV's even on, but by the time I'm done, uh, you're talking about you're. It's just like you come out of a like a, a hard massage, like a good massage. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're usually like struggling to walk out the door if you go to the right person, 
And that's the way you really should feel before you go to bed. So that's my recommendation. Is a little to have, off topic. Go for it. With your nighttime ritual. Uh-huh. A lot of people think, you know, take a hot shower, relax the body. Oh, yeah. You know, your body, to, to prepare it to go to sleep, actually cools down. Right. So a better idea is to take a cold shower it is before you go true. to bed. It's also uh, better to take a cold shower in the morning. Yeah. Well, I don't take a cold shower. Whenever I take a shower, I'll turn the cold on for like 30 seconds. Right. And it's it's, it's really good for your hair, uh, too. Eat a shock. <laughs> eat a shock thing. That's right. Wake yeah. you up. Yep. But it is, I heard it's But it very triggers good the sleep response, too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just Very part of the nighttime routine. Go ahead and foam roll, take a cold shower. You know, yeah, yeah. Have a good night's rest. That's fun. That's have a good night's routine. Support it. <laughs> so I think it's the biggest thing, really. Dynamic stretching before you work out. Absolutely. Um, however you want to do the routine. I mean, really do what works best for you. Static stretching when you are finished up. Really try your best to do that. It's going to help with the recovery. It's going to help with your overall mobility because you're not just stretching muscles. You're stretching, you're stretching tendons and ligaments yeah, as well. Right. Yeah. Not just muscle fibers. Um, and then foam rolling, great for recovery, great for post-workout. What else, Linda? I agree with all of those. And, you know, if you don't have a partner, like you said, you get a band, get a yeah, strap or something. Huge. and, and Ask uh, someone. Or, yeah. Ask you, I mean, there's so many techniques to yeah. use. A door. Or you can hire a trainer. There you go. Yeah, that's the best, that's <laughs> the there best you option. Go. Yeah. But. All right, awesome. Uh, great job, guys. There's a lot of really, really cool content in there. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this uh, episode. Hope you guys have a great week.